Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Bill Spencer, Senior Director, uh, Microsoft Teams, and I'm excited today to have Nolan Wheeler, CEO of Sync, to present the retail solution integrated with Teams. Now, the last time I, first time I met Nolan, last time I saw him, he was in Canadian Tire showing us live this system at work and really bringing retail profit benefits, productivity benefits, making the lives of frontline workers easier in a retail environment. Take it away, Nolan. Thanks so much, Bill. Thanks everybody for uh, joining. We're gonna go through a quick presentation here on exactly what Bill just mentioned uh, with the additional caveat of actually trying to make the customer life a little bit more enjoyable in brick and mortar stores as we try to make the customer a component of our frontline worker team and store. So you mentioned we show, show the unscheduled. What does that mean? So in true frontline work, and my background is store, district, and senior regional management with, with retail, true frontline work is all the unscheduled stuff. And unscheduled means it's all of those pages that you hear in stores or all those things that you're thinking people are talking about on the radios in stores. They're not tasks that we know that we're going to do from 9 until 10. It's the things that we just don't have any type of line of sight to. And that's everything from a curbside to a return to messes to customer complaints, locking showcases, IQ products and special orders, all those pieces. And today, how we as the industry and in retail solve this is we throw a bunch of labor at the problem. And we hope we get it right. It's super emotional. It's a guess. and We don't really know where the labor goes. A lot of the stuff that we do, we think about Michael Dubin. If you're familiar with Michael Dubin, he's the founder of Dollar Shave Club. Michael went into a large U.S. pharmacy in the United States in 2011, and he waited 45 minutes for help at a locking showcase. And you can imagine the frustration of a young male trying to buy razor blades in a showcase. That showcase also happened to have some embarrassing things in it, and that was the impetus for him to get out of his uh, stock trading job and into Dollar Shave Club. Now, that's really obvious friction, but friction can actually come in all forms. Sometimes retailers think what they're doing is actually experiential, but a lot of times it can be friction. And that can be things like full service deli cases that have got long lines, full service meat cases, bakery departments that don't have staff, you know, ordering a, a birthday cake for a family member or so and uh, so and so, um, floral displays, all those pieces. And we really got to think about friction is simply if I can't put the item in my cart today, which also includes an out of stock, that's friction in a store and that's kind of eroding that that in store experience. And for us, it took us a while to figure this out, about five years actually, but the secret sauce for us was to get all of our applications and put them into teams. And there's a reason for that. We're not just saying that this is very authentic. It came down to the accountability that we have within adaptive cards, the escalation management of those tasks. And if there's a certain threshold that's not being met, being able to escalate that within the team's environment from the right first group and up into the different areas of the organization, maybe even up to a supervisor or a store manager, the fact that we can leverage process inside that task and provide bi-directional communication to the customer. So if that's a curbside, it's I'm progressing through the curbside, please have your trunk or your boot open, or I'm getting that item for you out of a locking showcase or a high cube item or an out of stock item. This is the ability for us to get a pass from IT because it's Microsoft Teams, it's all residing in Microsoft Teams within those four walls. And it shows and bolsters that existing Microsoft investment that likely that retailer has made. So that sync Microsoft Teams stack addresses what we think is all the unscheduled. And this is a little diagram that shows, you know, help finder, which is the ability to find help off of a mobile phone and communicate directly with staff. These are really basic things like text for help, curbside, touchless lockers, returns and exchanges and loss prevention, proactive picking, flying tasks. Flying tasks is something that we pull out of the restaurant hospitality industry where a restaurant forgets to cook something for a table and they go into the kitchen and they say, we need a flying cheeseburger because they forgot to get the cheeseburger. These are those urgent tasks that we need someone to go to. And it's not just a random radio call that says customer service at check stand three. It's understanding and knowing what are the resources in the store, going to the right resource first and then escalating if we need escalations with the environment. And what it comes down to is we want to turn the customer into the best associate. Customers are more than happy to help if it means a faster transactional experience. We've all been in a store that's got some self checkouts and some regular lanes. 
And even if you really don't like self-checkout, if there's only one regular lane open, we learn pretty quickly to figure out how to go through self-checkout because what we really want to do is we want to respect our own time within the organization and the environment, get ourselves out of that experience as soon as possible, back out to our car and back to our families. So we talk a lot about employee productivity. We really think it's time to think about what it looks like for customer productivity. So we look at that diagram, we're gonna dive into three of those 19 modules, and we're gonna do this with intention. We're gonna go through text for help, we're gonna go into curbside pickup, we're gonna go to order up, and we're gonna do that by design. Because we're gonna go from the simplicity and the low barrier of text to some embedded data within curbside, and then looking at directing the associate directly to the SKU for the customer within the order up process. So here's the simplicity of text for help. This is showing the back end in terms of the store and, and some, some graphics that it automatically designs. So when we onboard a customer, we take all of their team's channels and as they update, they'll reflect on our side. And this is an example whereby we just for fun said, you know, let's do a program called grad because grad's coming up. We can go to into a store and we can keyword the word grad into the software. It will automatically create this signage. We've got different, um, uh, colors and different templates to design that signage. It'll automatically generate that QR code to scan. So if I scan that QR code, you're welcome to scan it now. That's automatically going to populate the number and text the word grad to a number. And we can assign that channel then into Microsoft Teams and what the best channel is. And this is what it looks like in terms of what the, the customer would see and what the associate would see. We keep the associate all within the four walls of Microsoft Teams, so it's super secure, it's super auditable. And we can see that the customer is asking a question, asking help for balloons in this case, and the associate is able to stay within Teams and communicate within Teams, but the customer has the experience that they're actually going through a text message or um, uh, relationship. We don't have any of the data from the customer, so you'll see that this customer's phone number is not hosted anywhere within the Microsoft Teams chat. You know, that person can't go text that person later in the day to say, hey, you know, something appropriate because they helped that person at the end of the day. So this is super secure and super friendly and a really low bar in terms of the adoption because of the ease of, of text messaging and that barrier. Now we want to look at how do we get more sophisticated? And that sophistication can come by a way of looking what we can do with curbside. I see so many times at retail organizations that it says, you've arrived for curbside, please phone the store and hit a number. That's an analog experience. Going through a phone tree and hitting a phone number in an analog phone tree is an analog last mile to a digital customer. This is the next side of this piece. And this is an example whereby with Canadian Tire, and this is a Microsoft uh, customer success story, we just embedded an I'm here button within the confirmation for pickup email. And this allows an automatic auto-generated Microsoft Teams adaptive card to not only show that somebody's there for a curbside, but to show that this is the customer who's there, this is their order number, this is their pickup code, the, all the pieces that we need in this entire component. And as we go through and we manage that adaptive card, we're actually updating the customer in real time and gamifying, making that wait feel like it's less as we go through that entire experience. So we go here from a text relationship, which is super easy and low barrier. We then start to get a little bit more sophisticated by bringing in some customer data to improve that experience and reduce the amount of texting. And now we can get into some really cool stuff, which is overcoming some really ugly friction within uh, locking showcases, high cube items, out of stocks and those pieces. So this is a real world example here whereby a customer would walk up to a locking showcase and instead of having one of those awful call buttons that just randomly pages for customer service to that aisle, no accountability, no data, no knowledge, no SLAs, et cetera, we're gonna get the customer then to say, hey, not only am I at the locking showcase, but this is the product that I want. And we allow the customer to go through here. This is the customer facing side for this Claritin that's in this locking showcase. Claritin has been locked up for a very long time in most uh, retail organizations. The customer can then request that Claritin. You've got the customer facing side on the right hand side of the screen here, whereby the customer is going to be able to go in there and say, that's the Claritin I want. And now they can continue shopping through the store and we buy time for the associate to then go grab that Claritin. And as you can see here on the customer screen, it shows that it's available at customer service. We're actually directing the customer to where it's gonna go. And there's some really cool experiential pieces here. There's some sales increase pieces here. I'll go through some numbers, but there's 
much better flow in terms of directing the customer as opposed to just a text message saying, I want help at the locking showcase in aisle 14 to be able to say, this is exactly what I want. I see that you have X amount in stock. I want one, I want four. And we get the customer to participate electronically within that frontline worker experience. And what we end up doing is we get to generate data all along the way. We can see here in this order timeline that there was a request for an item out of a locking showcase that was created at 1144. We can see when it was reviewed, when picking started, when it ended, and when it was completed. This took a this was a five minute transaction for the customer. So for the customer, we're buying the time of the customer requesting that item on their phone. Then by the time they grab a couple more things, they go through likely a POS environment that then involves a queue and they make their payment. We generally actually in our stores beat the customer to the POS location. And that just really is an incredible experience for the customer. And we negate a lot of the negativity and we negate a lot of the poor labor usage of taking an associate away from their primary task going to the locking showcase, having that conversation with the customer at the locking showcase, and then doing what we do in retail for locking showcases, which is called lock it up, walk it up, where we escort the person to the till, because if we just hand the product to the customer, then we're circumventing the entire process of giving that customer the item, and now they, there's no accountability if they're gonna pay for it, and we circumvent the entire purpose of that. So we end up not only improving the customer experience and doing a big labor savings, but we get to drive all this data that we just don't have today. Retailers do not know how many times customers go into stores and they try to go to a locking showcase and they abandon because they can't find help or it takes too long, or there's an out of stock issue, or it says that there's seven things in, 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 in inventory, but we can't locate that product. We don't have any of that data aside from anecdote that we might put in a manager's note at the end of a closing shift. This digitizes all those pieces and actually crowdsources some of the data to come in because we've digitized this analog experience through the process of having to do what we do, which is managing our labor very tightly within stores, locking things up, different schedules and cadences through the day throughout different departments and the lack of or over resources during those periods. So we kind of come in to the numbers. When it comes to assisting customers through those friction items, so that's those locking showcases, those out of stock holes, um, those large uh, high cube products, bakery uh, requests for a, a cake or a deli platter, all those pieces whereby, as I mentioned earlier, you can't just take the product and put it into your cart. We reduce the transactional labor per instance by two thirds. So on average, that takes about 12 minutes to help a customer. We bring it down to four minutes per customer because we create such efficiencies and we bypass a lot of the inefficiencies of process. With all those products whereby you have to go and search and find for the associate, we have a sales increase on average of 12 to 15%. And again, those are those items whereby you just can't grab the item and put it into your cart. For those locking showcase items, we decrease shrink by 58 basis points. And in fact, the shrinkage in the stores that we do, which is the loss associated with theft, organized retail crime, et cetera, that shrinkage is actually lower than the total store shrinkage. So if you think about you know, your experience at a Home Depot, literally our data is showing that the retailers that use this product, they lose fewer $400 DeWalt drills than they lose rolls of tape. So that's really where it comes down to in terms of that shrinkage component. We eliminate violent incidences caused by high value merchandise. So we probably read quite frequently in different publications, these violent experiences whereby there are these large cartloads going out. Uh, there was a poor Home Depot associate that actually lost his life uh, recently, about a month ago, um, from a scuffle at the front door of a Home Depot as they were trying to make a, a, a stop from, from a run on a cart. And when you take all that product and you leverage technology as opposed to physicality, you relieve all those instances where you have these violent incidences in stores as it pertains to high value merchandise. As I mentioned, we're massively improving inventory numbers due to the crowd sourcing of out of stocks and whole counts because we're starting to leverage all that data. And effectively what a retailer is able then to do is they're able to say, how many items are being canceled on a daily, weekly, period, annual basis analyze what categories those cancellations are because the inventory numbers don't match up in terms of what we were able to find as a store and we're able to actually put a confidence number on that skew on that category and then start to predictably know what are the items that we're going to have more challenge with in terms of the inventory integrity text for help 
We've got lots of stores that put text for help, for example, on their phone tree. You know, thank you for calling XYZ retailer for fastest help. Please text the word health to the following number. Again, a lot easier for the customer who's got the accountability of texting. They don't have to have the unknown of are they going to be getting help through that phone tree environment? Phone trees have become pretty nasty um, these days and cycling through the phone tree right back to the beginning. So the ability just to text as a customer and then for the retail environment, either hitting that on a ruggedized device, hitting that up on a, um, uh, a PC computer, on a keyboard, we're able to do assist those customers much more expeditiously with way less labor as we get to help them through text for help and teams as opposed to just answering phones uh, on phone call conversations. Every single store that we've done these types of programs with have had increases in their NPS on an average of 0.2 uh, increase in their Google score within a year, which is a massive uh, lift for, for retail organizations and one of the number one drivers of Google search. And we've got massive increased employee satisfaction because what's really important to this entire thing is that we're making the frontline work more relevant and reflective of frontline worker off-duty life. I joke and say, you know, frontline workers do not go home and talk on radios. Uh, when they go home, they go to their phone, swipe left, swipe right. We're trying to make that on-duty environment as reflective of their off-duty environment. So this is what the entire piece looks like in terms of all the different modules that we have in stores. I won't go through these uh, ad nauseum, but you know everything from loss prevention to efficiencies, you know some touchless lockers that we have integrated into stores for expediting pickup and returns, exchanges, service, um, proactive picking, those types of pieces. Help finder tools to assist people in stores to alleviate these really awful call buttons that the retail organizations have put in the stores. There's literally millions of call buttons in the United States, and we're providing a much better, much more cost-effective mousetrap by leveraging good, strong POP and Microsoft Teams as opposed to hard physical items and radio frequencies and, and pages and stores and radio headsets. Some multimedia products, uh, StockUp, which is the out of stock side of OrderUp, the flying tasks, the text for help, the curbside uh, pickup that we've had some really cool experiences with, with uh, the Microsoft success stories and, and some of our uh, vending applications. And with just three uh, retail organizations, we've done over 100 million sync customer interactions with uh, those three retailers in just over 18 months. So you can see that we've really proven this out at scale. You can see that there's a massive acceptance from the customer perspective. We had some customers during COVID that were doing over 25 million um, customer interactions between our platform and our customer on a monthly basis. So you can see and prove through the data that if you provide these types of digital tools to customers and we show retroprocity that we're going to get those folks out of the store with a better, faster experience, that there's a massive adoption. And everything is available a la carte. So you saw that first honeycomb all lit up. You know, this is a la carte. This is, I've got retailers that do one of these things. I've got retailers that do over a dozen of these things. And of course, it's just the more sticky, the more adoption we have with Sync, the stickier becomes Teams, the, sync, uh, the stickier becomes our stuff. And this is really all about all boats rising in the tide. And we think that what we've got here is technology that will seem obvious one day. I, as a retail operator, don't think that stores are going to be able to run themselves in the future unless you don't start engaging your customer to help you through some of these processes. Um, you know, imagine an old school day era of carbon paper writing what type of a birthday cake that you want versus scanning a QR code, selecting those items, just like you build a Domino's pizza for delivery, getting the right spelling of your loved one's name in the application and saying confirm and uh, commit your order, a much better, faster, more consistent approach versus you know traditional methodologies. And we're actively building the next generation. We're kind of never satisfied with what we're doing here. So further integrations uh, with uh, single sign-on, we've got some single sign-on already, but some additional single sign-on time and attendance tools, matching tasking with sync teams and payroll to start looking at the employee contribution. You know, we saw that that one employee um, helped that customer in five minutes. So what was that contribution to the sales dollars, to the profitability of that item? And in fact, are there some items that we're selling that we're selling at a loss because the labor required to actually compute on that transaction is so gnarly that maybe we need to either rethink process or maybe even rethink that, that skew or that price point. You now looking at leveraging GPT into text, returns, exchanges, shipping and special orders, you know, by leveraging the customer device, we get to leverage all of this, the form fill that's in the customer phone. How do we then continue to push that journey out and make that even more efficient for customers? 
and this is our biggest, most exciting one, provide reciprocity to the brands and in-store shopping for Omni in-store. So this is a matter of you're in the gap and you've got three shirts that you really like in those three colors. There's three additional colors that are available to leverage the order up platform, which hosts the barcode on the customer's phone and be able to go through point of sale and pay for all those six items and through API automatically ship those other three shirts to home is a really exciting thing that doesn't have that challenge that we face today with direct to consumer. And this can ex extend into direct to consumer, meaning um, uh, subscription models. So going into baby and infant formula, most infant formulas all locked up. If we can leverage the customer to engage with their mobile phone within an Albertson store and have a Procter and Gamble success story where we sign them up for a subscription model, we now have the direct ligature between the customer's device and payment through the traditional point of sale methodologies maintaining PCI compliance, whereby we can actually make sure that we can have a DTC relationship with the retailer that's fair um, and reciprocal. And if you wanna watch more of the, the 19 uses of Teams that we have, there's a YouTube video, it's been about a thousand views in the last two months, most by Microsoft people uh, that are probably on this call and elsewhere. And if you have any questions or discussions, or you wanna reach out to me, it's nolan at synctech.com. Fantastic. Nolan, thank you so much. I think this is the future of retail. It's awesome. Let's see, we got a few questions. What languages do you support? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, yeah, we've got support for English and French currently, but we can have more translation files and make more languages happen. Excellent. So if you have another language you need to support, reach out to the folks at Sync. Uh, you can see Nolan's contact right here so they can start to work with your customer and adopt accordingly. Stephanie wanted to clarify French or French Canadian? Uh, French Canadian. Awesome. Thank you. Additional features are in the works. It's a wonderful solution as it stands, but I'm just curious, what are sort of the next problems that you're looking to solve? So for us, you know, uh, there was a couple of mentions in the presentation about lockers. We actually didn't have uh, any plans in our business plan to do lockers. And in fact, I think lockers have got a pretty bad reputation. I don't even like the word locker, frankly, but retailers came to us and started selling us. You guys are selling too much stuff too fast. And when I say that, there's actually a governor when you look at traditional retail. If you go to a Home Depot, there might be five or six people in the drill aisle. And when somebody hits that call button, the person who walks around the corner in their orange apron, they'd have no idea who hit the call button and they're not going to triage all five people at once. But when you use software, you can actually have all five people requesting and assisting in that regard. And that's where that governance goes away, whereby it's not a one to one relationship of lock it up, walk it up and abandon four people in the aisle. So a lot of the stuff that we're working on now comes down to what we're doing with touchless lockers uh, and, and being able to assist not only kind of five people at once, but start using some of the sales data to say, if we're going to go put this item in the locking showcase, pardon me, this item in the in the locker for a customer pickup because we have a request now, what are those items that we're going to proactively pick and put in the locker? Because algo dictates that within the hour, there's going to be a request for these items based on promo or sales or seasonality or weather. And then that also extends into turning those lockers into a, a physical UX on returns, exchanges, service, and et cetera. So we're really focused on what are all those things that customers are painfully standing in line for? How many of those things can we start triaging with software? And when applicable, when can we tie a touchless locker into that in order to facilitate a full end-to-end -end transaction that's digital and remove that lineup all together at customer service? That's brilliant. Steve asks, are you building in React? Oh, yeah, I answered that one in the chat. Yeah, a good chunk of our front end is written in React. Can you speak to data residency? Where is the customer data stored? Where is the merchant data stored? Our uh, our Azure database uh, for a good chunk of it. Uh, customer data, we don't really store a ton of it. It's pretty much just a phone number uh, or first name, last name uh, for orders. But uh, yeah, that expires fairly quickly and we store it encrypted at rest. Excellent. That's a really interesting point, Bill, that Quentin kind of alludes to. We, if, you, if, you, if anybody goes through any of these experiences, you don't have to download an application as a customer. 
Um, we conceal your phone number. We don't ask you for any information, any credit card information. We don't ask for your name or anything. We, by design, have decided through the 100 plus million transactions that the fewer items that we ask for, the adoption just goes through the roof. So what this all comes down to is that we're really trying to be respectful of customer data, and we're trying to do this as anonymously as possible. All we're trying to do is provide a better customer experience to the, to, to the customer. Uh, and by asking for as minimal information as possible, we're seeing the much stronger adoption as we go through this over time. Great. Jeffrey asks, what cloud backend does the synced solution take advantage of? Yeah, the majority of it's running on Azure. Uh, we've got okay. a couple little utilities and stuff elsewhere, but yeah, Azure, Azure primarily. Thank you, Quentin. How many retailers are using this now? How many retail locations? Can you give us a sense for the popularity uh, retailers are interested in considering? Yeah, at uh, at our some of the peak stuff that we're doing through COVID, we had a couple thousand locations, I think the high 2000 locations that were using this. We have seen a couple of people uh, fall off on the curbside uh, applications, but you know, we're really are an unknown within the space. So, you know, this really comes down to you and we just were at NRF and then also just understand the value and the importance of if this is all sitting in Microsoft Teams, the friendliness and the training component of this is such much, so much more attractive to a retailer. This is really the future of what we believe, whether it's us or others, to keep things within Teams. You don't need to train anybody on new modules. You're simply just getting notifications of new net additional tasks that come with new modules. Thank you, Nolan. I think I can speak for uh, the many folks on this call. It is so compelling, takes great advantage of technology, has clear customer benefits, clear benefits for the frontline worker and for store operations. So I really appreciate that you've built this on top of Teams and that you present to us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks all. Take care.